Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel Astro Exploring. My name is Nick and tonight I'm going to be doing something that I don't do very often and that is taking a... There was a wasp. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick and this is Astro Exploring. In tonight's video I'm going to be doing something that I don't do very often and that is taking a photograph of the full moon. Now the moon is actually the reason that I got into astrophotography and since I got into actually imaging rather than any visual work I've actually taken the moon for granted and neglected it quite a lot and the reason for that being uh, is that with my current setup when there's a full moon out I can't actually do really any other good deep sky imaging the, the moon is not a friend to us deep sky astrophotographers um, because it just washes out all of your images you can get away with it by photographing something on the opposite side of the sky to the moon but even then it's, it's still not as good. Now the way that uh, astrophotographers get around the moonlight in the sky is by using a filter. So for example if you use a hydrogen alpha filter in your astrophotography um, that is filtering out all of the wavelengths uh, apart from the sort of red end at the 656 nanometer part of the spectrum and that is a great way of being able to still utilize a clear night when there's a full moon out. What you can then do is you can take that hydrogen alpha image, you can stack it in deep sky stack it like you would any normal color image, but you can actually then add that as a layer to your previous images and it will bring out a lot more detail than you would have had in your color image as well. Now the moon was, now the, moon was the first uh, object that I ever saw through the eyepiece of a telescope and I was so amazed with the detail that I was seeing that I took a, I took a picture of it on my smartphone, uh, which I'll share with you now. And um, I was just blown away by, by what I was seeing. And so as I've said, the moon is not a friend to us deep sky astrophotographers. And so um, I feel like I've neglected it for quite a long time. So I'm quite excited to be photographing this tonight. I've photographed this a few times. It was the first object that I ever imaged through a telescope. Uh, so it was back when I had a Newtonian reflector. I had the uh, Celestron Astromaster 130EQ and I just held my phone up to the, to the eyepiece and took a few pictures. And then I moved on from there. I bought myself a, a DSLR and a, a camera lens and I, was, I started taking photographs just holding the camera up to the sky and, and taking a few pictures with my, with my DSLR. And this was before I ever knew about um, stacking images or, or anything like that. And since then I bought the Skywatcher Star Adventurer, which is the equipment I'll be using tonight. And I've got myself a small refractor telescope, which I will also be using tonight. <laughs> I'm really excited that I'll be able to, to take this video with you tonight. I'm gonna to do this as a bit of an imaging session and then I'm gonna do a separate video about how to stack and process um, moon photography because that is different to how we do uh, deep sky astrophotography. So hopefully people find that video useful. Now for the visual people among us, um, you'll be saying oh well a full, moon, a full moon is the worst kind of moon to look at and i absolutely agree anybody doing visual astronomy don't bother looking at a full moon it is much better to look at a, a crescent moon because with the rest of the moon shaded out you can really get um, a lot of the detail into the eyepiece of the moon that is illuminated as opposed to a full moon where it, the object is so bright that you can't actually look at it through an eyepiece without a moon filter otherwise you'll, you'll damage your eyes so please please don't do that um but for imaging, I really wanted it to be a full moon and there's a wasp that keeps coming around me. So if I keep doing that, that's why. And the equipment that I'm using tonight needs no introduction if you are familiar with this channel, but I'll be using the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. I'll be using that on the lunar tracking modes, along with my Skywatcher Evo Star 72 ED DS Pro, which is just a small wide field refractor telescope. And uh, I really recommend it for people who are beginning astrophotography because it's an absolutely fantastic bit of kit. Um, I've got a 0.85 times uh, reducer flattener attached to that and then I've got my DSLR and I'm going to be using my modified DSLR tonight. It doesn't really make any difference the fact that it's modified but it's, it's the one that I use for astrophotography. Okay so a question that I get all the time is when is it best to polar align or, or how do I know that I'm pointing towards the correct star Polaris? And the answer to that is to polar align when it is like this outside, i.e. when it's not completely pitch black. Uh, if you've got your mount set to roughly the correct latitude, I'm 51 degrees north here, and it's pointing north, I just use the compass app that comes on my iPhone to make sure that I'm pointing north. 
then the only star that you'll see within the field of view of the polar scope is Polaris. So that is the ideal time to polar align because it's the only star that you'll be able to see. So you know that you're definitely on the correct one. Polar aligning before it gets dark also means that you don't have to use the polar scope illuminator, which I don't really find the most useful bit of kit. Um, so you can look through the polar scope without actually lighting it up at all, which is great. So now all I need to do that I'm polar aligned is wait for it to get dark. Okay, so it is now, it's now dark. The moon is just coming round next door's house now. Uh, I'll give it another half an hour before I start um, imaging. But while I'm waiting for that, a question that I've been getting a lot on my website, which is um, astroexploring.com, uh, on Instagram messages and also comments on, on YouTube videos is um, with using using the L bracket and the and the counterweight how do you actually image any target that isn't sort of in the northern part of the sky and the answer to that is that you need to loosen the clutch in right ascension and you can turn your mount like that lock it back up And then you need to use this declination adjustment and you can see that the telescope is now moving over this way. A quicker way to do that if you need to move it quite a lot is there are two threads on the uh, underside of the L bracket. The smaller one is what you use to uh, attach to your telescope. The bigger one will actually loosen off the declination so that if you if you give that half a turn you can actually uh, move your telescope uh, much more uh, quickly. The moon is now in a position that I can image it so what I'm doing at the minute is just framing it up on the live view screen of my camera. Um, the reason it's red is as I said earlier it's because of my, my modified camera um, so don't worry about that, I can sort that out in, in Photoshop afterwards. Um, I'm also just looking at the focus, so I'm zooming in on the five times zoom, just going in and out on the um, on the fine tune part of the uh, of the focuser, just to make sure that it's it's focused properly. Okay, so I've got my camera going behind me now. Um, so I'm shooting at ISO 100 at 1 3 20th of a second. Uh, I'm going to take probably a couple of hundreds images over the next sort of hour. So I really hope that you found this video useful. I do have more videos on the Skywatcher Star Adventure and I'll put a link to those videos in the description down below. And I will share with you um, the image that I've taken from tonight at the end of this video. And if you found this video useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to my channel and also check out my website. That's astroexploring.com. And you can, you can find me on uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter all using Astro Exploring. And be sure to keep a lookout for my next video where I will use my images from tonight to go through how I uh, stack and process my moon photography. So until next time, thanks for watching.